was <coughs> really really you had to cough as soon as I get ready to do the damn intro you heifer <laughs> shit I gotta deal with her and this damn cough I got me some peppermints y'all gonna have to wait till I get done with my mind hold up I tried to get my calls out before I came. Okay, go. <clears throat> go ahead, go you ahead. Good. Mm-hmm. What's up, A gang? And welcome back to another episode of A Yell Talk, where we just talk about any and every freaking thing. Before we get this episode started, um, I did want to I did want to address something. Um, now somebody did make a comment on the last episode that I posted and this says nothing. This is nothing against, oops, this is nothing against the person who left the comment cause they, they didn't mean any harm by the comment, but I wanted to address and make sure that we all understand what this podcast is all about. This podcast is not a, what do you want to call it? Like I'm not Oprah. I'm not doing interviews. Oh. <laughs> we're not, we not interviewing people. We are bringing people on and we're having general conversation about mm-hmm. just random stuff. I don't prepare for these podcasts. I let the conversation just kind of flow how they would normally flow if we were not on a podcast. And yeah. to me, that what, that's what make it more interesting. When I'm looking at a podcast... I'm looking when I'm listening to a podcast, I like to listen to podcasts with just general conversation. I don't Mm -hmm. I don't like looking or watch I mean, or listening to stuff that is like, so how old are you? What's your name? What do you do for a living? You know what I'm saying? Like the whole. So I don't know what about me made people see Oprah and that this is a talk show, but that ain't what it is. And I had to have the same conversation with the fun police because when I first started the podcast, he was like, oh, I got an idea. You should go around and interview athletes. And it was like, do I look like a damn interviewer to you? I talk too much to be doing interviews. Like, I'm not that interested in that many people Mm, lives. Like, I'm not that interested to sit and, and ask a million questions. You know what I'm saying? To people that I don't know. Like, you would have to be like a Jackie Ina or like a real big celebrity for me to do that type of podcast with. Everybody else, we just have a general conversation. So I did want to put that out there because I'm sorry if y'all thought that when y'all see certain people on the podcast that y'all was getting ready to get this Q&A type situation. I'm sorry if that's what y'all thought it was. But baby, that's not that's not it. That's not what this is. This and is, ain't. this is just general conversations that I'm having with general people. Some people y'all may know, some people y'all might not know. Um, so yeah, so I did want to put that out there because honey, one person was like with Dom Galore, they felt like they didn't, you know, they didn't get they didn't get to know her because of my storytelling. It was like it Maybe wasn't a storytelling. It, it was it was relatable to what the conversation was. Like we was having a conversation, and I'm if 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 the person I'm having a conversation with say something that I have something relatable to it, I'm gonna say it. Like I wasn't mm-hmm. sure if it was expected of me to like say something, like ask a question, and then shut up and don't say anything and just let the other person talk. I'm like I talk no, too much. No, you engage. I and you engage in conversation yeah. it, it was meant to keep the conversation flowing now if the other person that is on the podcast with me if you know if the conversation doesn't flow that direction it just don't flow in that direction yeah. and a lot of what me and Don was talking about that was our first time meeting each other so we really you know we were just kind of all over the place which y'all was chilling each other out yeah, basically yeah we were dating honey yeah that was, that was our first date that was yeah. our first date so yeah so I just wanted to address that again. It's nothing against the person who made the comment because I don't think they, you know, they meant anything by the comment. It was like, okay, this is just I need to address this and let it be known what this podcast is about. And baby, I ain't no Oprah. So yeah. as y'all know, let's back up a little bit. As y'all <sighs> know, this is best friend. This is best friend. Second time being on a podcast. A little bit of background in case you did not tune into the last podcast. If you didn't tune into the last podcast, I'm gonna need for you to tune into the last podcast because what are you doing? Um, 
me and best friend and my phone is currently going off y'all and it's all the way over there so i can't even see who that is texting me but me and best friend have been best friends since fourth fifth grade something like that you it's, just don't remember do it's, you it's been a long time it's been a long time. it was fifth grade fifth grade it's been a long time so we have been best friends um she has been the person that has been there through literally every milestone of my life literally um she is the person that i'm gonna trust probably the most <laughs> girl i'm over here trying not to call something <laughs> yeah and she got smokers cough. you like let me get this cough out right quick go for it um back to your lovely intro of me I'm sorry. Oh my God, you ruined it with the smoker's cough. <laughs> Y'all, every time we go somewhere, she be having a damn smoker's cough. We went to Miami so that I can have her. Here I am with my storytelling. Mm -mm. We went to Miami so I can have Lipo 360, and she had the smoker's cough like that whole day before. And I'm like, if you, can't you get on that plane, if you get on this plane doing all that damn coughing, this is right fresh out of COVID. No, we were still in COVID. Was we still in COVID? We were still in COVID. She, I'm like, if you get on this plane doing all that damn coughing, she did good though. By the time we got to Miami, you was cool. You wasn't doing Girl, no coughing. I was over there fucking that. <laughs> was you? Mm. I ain't want good. You know how soon, you know when COVID was real. Soon somebody come. Yeah. You got that vid. Yeah. Nah, you gotta go. So I'm sitting yeah. over there, girl. I'm practicing breathing. I'm, I'm trying, to, <laughs> trying to swallow the cough. Like, <clears throat> I probably was looking that at was you just like, the throat clear. <laughs> I probably was like, girl, if you don't pull it together. So anyway, okay, this podcast is already all, all over the place. She gets here and she's like, what are we talking about? Girl, you know what damn well. I don't know what we talking about. So I did ask a question. If y'all see me on my phone, that's because I am looking at questions that people have asked on the TikTok. And I'm just trying to reference back to those because I couldn't remember, um, you know, how, you know, what everybody was saying. Talk about how important it is for friends to acknowledge that you changed, changed for the better. Um, why wouldn't you want to acknowledge your friend for accomplishments? Well, I I see it as like we are not who we were twenty years ago. Oh, in I, my head, I am. I swear to God. Yeah, in my I, head, I I'm still it. like eighteen, nineteen I years it. old. I believe you think that. I really do. But we aren't who we were twenty years ago, and even though we have changed over the years, we have managed to adjust to our changes mm -hmm. so like even with me you know what i'm saying like even with the whole being on tiktok and being in can't go in public without people noticing who i am and even people saying stuff to you yeah. um about oh best friend you know what i'm saying even that thing like you still in your head you look at me as danielle yeah. <laughs> literally you be like, what is y'all, what is all this fuss about? Like, she's literally a normal, regular person because you was there from but day one. But then it's crazy. It's like the people that know that you have been there since day one. Yeah. It's like when you start blowing up, it was like I would get them phone calls. Yeah. And it's just like, this the same person that was at our house or this right. the same person that came to such as a, y'all acting like this somebody new. Like, people be like, can you call so she can say happy birthday, girl? How <laughs> can you call so she can say happy birthday? Yeah, it be stuff like that that I just be like, I I don't get it because I'll just be like, that's just Danielle. But somebody on the outside looking in, I I agree. Like I agree with you. Like if it was you, I would probably be the same way. Like, okay, she's like this normal person, yeah. so I agree. But somebody on the outside looking in will probably look at it a little different. They'll probably look at it as. Oh, she not supporting her. Oh, oh, she might feel like she's too nonchalant about her friend being. When it's like, you got to understand that she's known me from the time that I was. Literally. Little. We weren't even teenagers. No. When we met. So it's probably the same way like my sister or my yeah, mama, or my dad. You know what I'm saying? Like, dang yeah. 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 And then like, even with you and your accomplishments, um, moving out of the state. 
That was a big one. That was. I didn't think you was ever going to do that. That was a big one. And I did it. It just like, I don't know. It was like God said, go. And you just. It literally like 72 hours, I was gone. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it was just like, I just kept hearing that voice like, go. And moving out of state. I didn't think it was going. I'm, it's, it's not a, uh, it's not hard, but it's a big adjustment. Mm -hmm. And when you move away from literally everything you didn't know, right. you got to get used to new surroundings. You, but it's a, it's a learning curve. Right. Sometimes I do get frustrated with certain things, like just the different laws and what you can't do, yeah. what you can do. Just. The different atmosphere of the schools and right. the different kids, like where we at, it's I gotta take this peppermint out. <laughs> like where we at, it's so mixed cultured, yeah, and it's constant change because it's near a military base, right? So it's like it's military family, so they coming and going, coming and going, yeah. coming and going. So it's constant change, but it's just it's a learning curve and it is lonely. Sometimes it does get lonely. Yeah. Just being down there by yourself, but then you have to realize, well, with me, I realized it was necessary. Yeah. Like a lot of things I don't do no more. A lot of people yeah. I don't talk yeah. to no more. Right. I've, you know, I'm open to a lot more things. Like I pray more. Mm -hmm. Um, I take my medication, you know. Yeah, when she talking about medication, she ain't talking about medication. She I take my medication. She talking about medication. And you life is peaceful. Mind. Life is peaceful. I do feel like you at peace, but yeah, I feel life like life is really peaceful. It was like the you had to isolate. Yeah. It was like you had to isolate so that you can, you know what I'm saying, like pull it together so that you can level up. It's definitely time for you to level up. Like yeah. it's it's that time. And it's that time. I have I have hit that point. Yeah. It's it, it's, it is time. Most <laughs> definitely. Yeah. And I'm I'm a support whatever. So it's like the plan is coming together yeah. now. It's like I can see you know how you plan stuff out and what we have playing God that ain't God's plan. It ain't never his plan. So you going you know, you gonna hit some some bumps and some right. some, some potholes in that road. Right. But it's like now finally all the bumps and the, yeah. the potholes and everything it's working made, out. Yeah, it made sense. Yeah. Like where I'm at now, it made sense for me to go through that. It made sense for me to get up and yeah. move. It made sense for me to yeah. stop doing this. It made sense for me, you know, not yeah. to listen. Now, that's not to say it, it's still still a few little, little trinkets I got to work yeah. on. But I'm not where I was a year ago. Yeah. So as mentally, I'm not right. where I was a year ago. Yeah. God has his way. And I am, y'all, if y'all know anything about me, I'm not a really, like, spiritual person like that. No. Um I did not did not grow up in church. I did I don't I know nothing about the Bible. I cannot recite not one scripture in the Bible. I have never read anything in the Bible, which is crazy because Fun Fleas is totally different. Fun Fleas grew up in the church. Fun Fleas can really? he, recite scriptures. He yeah, he's very but he's not spiritual. Um I grew up in a church, but I wouldn't say that. I'm a spiritual person. And maybe I'm using the wrong terminology. I'm not y'all can correct me in the comments. Like I ain't no diehard Christian. Yeah. But I do believe I believe there is a higher power. Yes. Um I can't sit and tell y'all who that higher power is. This is me being very transparent right now. So don't do too much in the comments, y'all. Mm -hmm. I'm being very honest. I believe there's a higher power. Who that higher higher power is, I don't know. I be looking at people in the church like that's how the fun police is. Me. I look I, at it as a business now. I don't look is. at it as a church. It's a business to me. It is. It is. And I don't think like it's genuine no more. Like it's so much to, like when you go to church, you expect to be safe. Yeah. You know, you, I agree. you should be around people that you trust. Nowadays, your kids can't even like when we was younger, we used to have the sleepovers at the church, mm -hmm. the lock-ins. Mm -hmm. Baby, I'm not sending my that. I'm not sending my child to nobody's church to lock them in. Yeah. Which is sad. You got you got the preachers and it, it 
too many is is too much. That, right. They, they trying to play with little little kids and yeah, it's it's not safe for your kids to do anything like how we used to go to Saint Santa Palace. Yeah, our parents literally dropped us off at a skating rink. Ooh, we used to have some fun though. <laughs> We was just out here just trying to be grown, child. Yeah. yeah. They, but they literally dropped us off at a skating rink with a thousand other kids. They did. And we was, but we and was fine. Left, but we was safe. Yeah. I'm not dropping my no. child off at nobody's no. skating rink. My child can't even. Carly would never have a sleepover. No. Yeah. She would never be able to go to a sleepover. My first time, my first tr- time trying to let uh Leah go to a sleepover. I walked her in. It reeked of cigarette smoke in in these people' house, and I understand. Like I'm not judging people who smoke cigarettes. Like you smoke cigarettes, that's, that's but your she business. got asthma. She do have she do have asthma, but at the time, like mentally walking into a, a smoke infested house, you get a bad vibe. Yeah, it was a whole bad vibe, and I was like, I don't want to leave my kid here. So my thing with the kids it used to be, y'all can go. For a little while, but you guys, spend but you're not spending the night, and me just even letting them go over there for a little while was a lot. Was a, a lot for us to, you know, mm-hmm. to do. Um, but yeah, I believe in like prayer. I pray a lot. Mm-hmm. I pray a That's lot. That's something I started doing more yes. when I got to Tennessee. I pray. I pray a, a lot. lot. I do. I do, and I do a lot of like. Um, Meditating. Writing. I don't meditate because if I meditate, I'm gonna go to sleep. Um, really? Yeah, I can't sit still Baby. like that without. I'm falling asleep, girl. I'll be somewhere in a raindrop on top of a leaf, honey. <laughs> Damn, I want to be. I want to be a raindrop on top of a leaf. Girl, when I say that's yes. because you might be taking your medication before you meditate and do. See, and baby, it sends you in a whole trance, honey. I be sitting there, but look. I better forgot what I was mad about, what I didn't started meditating about. Um, so yeah, I, I do meditate. I mean, I don't meditate because of my ADD. I yeah. And the way that my brain operates, like I cannot shut my brain off. I saw a TikTok the other day where it was a, a wife and a husband talking and he was saying how when his wife lays down to go to sleep, like she has stuff going on in her head. Mm-hmm. His head is just like clear, he go to sleep and she was like, So what about the uh what did she call him? him the um damn what do you call the person that's telling the story like in a book author no not the author damn i can't think of i know it. what you're talking about um narrator, narrator. <laughs> we knew she didn't know yeah. <laughs> gabby know everything yeah so she was like what about the narrator in your head and he just started laughing i'm like so everybody don't have a narrator in their head do you have a narrator? Yeah. Gabby, do you have a narrator in your head? Kind of. No, like the person that literally, like I have somebody in my head that's talking all day. N- you do? Okay. So okay. for somebody, I don't think the fun police has a narrator in his head. Why do you say that? Because all people, apparently all people don't have a narrator. Because in this. Okay, t- so back up. We, what, do this, what do this person mean to tell you? Because <laughs> hey, I'm trying to figure out if I got one or not. Because <laughs> I'm like. That's right. <laughs> like sometimes I talk to myself. <laughs> I have whole conversations. Like. like the narrator is just the person that's it's like in my head all day. Like, list, like telling me the list of things that I need to do. Um, like for instance, I'm not trying to be funny. For instance, if I'm sitting here looking out that window, the narrator in my head will be like, "We are looking out the window. This is so beautiful. Like, look at the green." No, grass. I ain't got that. You don't have <laughs> <No>. that. <coughs> I have a whole personality in my head, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Not a whole first. <coughs> oh my no, god, baby. Yeah, I have a narrator in my head. No, and I don't have that. I found out that everybody don't have a narrator, and I don't think the fun please have a narrator. Like I got somebody in my head. Like we have conversations. I mean, I my my narrator. No, I don't really have conversations with my narrator. But my narrator is just like talking throughout the day. So when I lay down to go to sleep, he. 
I'm not, I want to call like it a heat, but it's, brain off. it's like my brain never shuts off. Like when I'm asleep, my brain still does not shut off. Like I can wake up in the middle of the night with like an idea or something. And I would like have to get my phone and put it in my notes so I can remember when I wake up. But while I'm asleep, my brain is still going. Like um, your brain. So when you lay down and go to sleep, does your brain shut off? It takes a while. Because I'm thinking about what all I got to do. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm sitting, or if I'm like stressed about something or worried about yeah, something, yeah. it's playing over and over in my head. But not, I don't have a narrative right. <laughs> Listen, I need to name this mug. He needs to be paying rent or something really because do, he is baby, rent free in my head. How did we get on this? <laughs> I'm for How real. did we even get here? But yeah, so we was talking about like praying and stuff like that. So the narrator in my head is literally like, pray all the time throughout the day see now with me like i could be randomly standing there and i would just close my eyes and start praying no my prayers are not like see that. but my prayers are not like the stand what you call it, like the standard Heck prayer no. of what people I don't, would think i don't, like, I don't know like, dear god is. you know i don't start Hell off no. like my prayers are more like a conversation it's a conversation yeah I don't even know. You know how people, would, before they eat, they bow their heads and say a prayer? Mm -hmm. I don't know that prayer. Like, you know how, what is it? The daily bread or... God is great. God is good. Let me I don't know that. that. I don't. I have never been taught that prayer. Ever in my life. I don't know that you prayer. You ever been taught the Lord's prayer? Heck no. Now I lay me down to sleep, I pray to no. my soul to keep. Really? No. We have some teaching. I know. I I I grew up in a household that did not talk about God. I do a lot of journaling too. I you journal. Know, I have. I you know what? Learn. I want to start journaling. I need to start back. I used to do it a lot, and I got it from when I was going to my therapist, and um, she was like journaling. I miss her. I miss her too. Yeah, I was going to the same therapist. Her name was Virginia. I, I love miss. Virginia, baby. I don't know what it is, honey. That first visit. Oh uh, yeah, that first visit. I was like, oh nah, I ain't coming back. No, the first visit, like. We was cool. We was cool. Oh, no. My first visit, I did not. I was like, I, she ain't the one. Look, no, I, I felt like she was the one. She asked the right questions. She bring out the right stuff in you. She make you take accountability. Mm -hmm. She make you acknowledge mm -hmm. your wrongdoings. It's like, we ain't talking about what that person did. We talking about what you, you did. did. Yeah. And it was like the first visit. I'm talking to her. She was like, nah, tell me. Tell me what's really going on. Really? Yeah, because I was kind of, you could holding tell back. I was holding back. And she was like, nah, that ain't it. And I'm sitting there, I'm just like, well, such and such, such and such. She was like, nah, nah, that ain't it. Right. She was like, what, what, what you really want to talk about? Yeah. And baby, I started talking. I got ready to leave. She said, are you okay? Baby, them dead gone tourists got to come and snot got the yeah. sight. And it was just the are you okay? See, when I my first visit with her, it made me worse. And that's so me, I was associating the stuff that she brought up mm -hmm. that we tried because she was like, we unpacking. We yeah. unpacking all your all your shit. Mm -hmm. And then you we gonna sort it out and we gonna repack it, but we gonna organize it yeah. and the stuff that needs to get thrown in the trash is getting thrown in the trash so when we start unpacking all of this trauma and stuff and when you i left I, I was not ready i was not ready and so, she brings it out girl when i tell you i was in my car in the parking lot for like 30 minutes i was contemplating a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yes, because it was unpacking stuff from the past mm. that I was like that you had put away. That I had put away, forgotten about. And now you gotta relive it. I had to relive it and me reliving it now was like, oh no. I should have never accepted mm -hmm. that. Or oh no, like I should never had, you know, moved on from that like that was that was just like some messed up stuff that i made a conscious yeah. decision to just move on from and um i was like damn do i need to be <coughs> in this in this marriage <coughs> you know what i'm saying like do i need to just be by myself and of course i was it was crazy thoughts because it was like y'all have made it this far yeah, like yeah but it's just yeah, the feeling of having to go yeah. through all of that again, because it was like 
she brought me to a space where she even helped me in my daughter's relationship. Mm, like when yep. I would talk to her about certain things, like I just felt yeah. or whatever, she'd be like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, you wrong. Yeah. You wrong." Yeah. She was like, "Just because you the mama, that does yep. not make you right." And it was like in my head, I was so used to being. I was grown when I grew up. It was just like. They're still your mama. They're still your yeah, daddy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No matter what they did, whether it was right, wrong, indifferent, it was always, that's your mama. That's your mm-hmm. daddy. You have to respect your mama, your daddy, blah, 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 blah. But it was like once I got to a point where me and my my kids, my kid was able to have like straight conversations. adult conversations. Mm-hmm. And instead of me just hearing her, and in my head, I'm the mama, so whatever I say yeah. goes. But for me to take the time out and actually listen to her and listen to her feelings and listen to it's it's literally like sometimes Gappy be the mama and I be the child. Mm-hmm. And that's why Virginia always said that she she did not take on children. Um like she did not um what do you call what are they clients or patients? Clients. They're clients. She did not take on adolescent clients because majority of the time it's the parents that are a problem yeah. so her goal was to work with the work parent. with the parents and in return <coughs> you know the the situation with the children would get better after the parents were healed and i always said like i went to therapy to work on myself so that mm-hmm. my kids wouldn't have to work yeah. on them because i'm yeah. I'm not, I wasn't perfect. Like, I did so much messed yeah. up stuff as a parent back in the day that I'm praying my kids don't remember. Um, I'm, I'm right there with yeah, you. You know, child. even just, like, because growing up, like, in a household, my mom, and I would always say my mom is, she was a great mom. She did it by herself, single parent. She did an amazing job. But my mom had ways about her that she got from her mom. You know what I'm saying? It was uh, it was a cycle. Mm-hmm. So the I, I saw the cycle continuing on with me and my kids. Mm. And when I as I was growing now up, I, I used to always too. say, "I never do this to my kids," or you know, and I'll it be never. That very thing you find yourself doing. But it was like it, I went through a moment in my life where it was a um, for a split second. I was like, "I'm my mama all over yep. again." Yep. And Gabby was like, "No, you're not." Mm-hmm. No, you're not. Me and Rebecca have to tell. My sister, Rebecca, um, we have to tell each other that all the time, too. Like, hey. Because it's like you, when you get, you start seeing and you start noticing things that you did that they did. Yeah. And you just be like. Yeah. And it's like you try so hard. Yep. Not to be that parent. Yep. You try so hard to be better than their parent that you actually do yep. exactly what their parent did. And that's always the goal. And I feel like even with my mom, I feel like her goal was to be a better parent than what her mom was. Mm-hmm. And she was. Like, you know, the stuff that my grandma, like the stories that I've heard about my grandma um, back in the day are horrible. Even though, you know, it didn't take away from the fact that we loved her to death. But some of the stuff that she did as a parent was horrible. And my mom d- did majority of nothing of that you know saying majority of those things she did not repeat but you know it was certain things that she did repeat but i think it's just all you know learning like you parenting don't don't come with a book so you don't know (coughs) what's you know right and wrong but you don't really know how to handle certain situations until you're in it and sometimes yeah. you you work off of emotions and anger because yeah. i've been angry with my kids to the point where i didn't put my hands on them you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and I, i've been angry to the point where i put my hands on them and i felt like i took it too far i feel yeah. like you know saying that's what Growing up, that's what I thought that's, was discipline. Yeah, that's what you seen. Yeah. But it's like now we're older. It don't take all of that. I can't tell you the last time Corley got popped. Oh, baby. Boy, I talk so much shit to Corley. <laughs> I'm I really your do. I be, I'm going to beat your ass, Corley. I'm going to diss Corley. Yeah. I'm going to that Corley. And it's like I can't bring the grips yeah. of myself putting my hands yeah. on her. And unfortunately, Lyndon and Leah had to take... They they had to take the the sacrifice yeah. of me putting my hands on them 
for me to understand that it didn't take all of that. So by the time I got to Lexi, yeah, Lexi only had one butt whooping in her life. See, G- Gabby, she was not that kid. Like, I didn't have to whoop Gabby a lot. Now, once she got into her teenage phase, mm-hmm. she did the typical teenage yeah, stuff. Yeah. But she never was that kid to, like, just take it. Through. It was like one time with Gabby. Gabby was like, look, I, I don't know how this heifer keep finding out right. what I'm doing behind these closed doors. Right. But let me just go ahead and tell her what I'm doing. Yeah. Mama, I, I'm trying to go over so-and-so. So, and it was like once she got to that point. They had them a problem. Now, mine's is when Lyndon and Leo were little. When they little bitty. And the thing is, is they it wasn't anything that made... It probably wasn't even anything serious enough to get a butt but whooping. it was a bunch of just how you was feeling. It was the shit that I was going through. Yep. Taking my frustration and my anger out on them. They do one little thing. I go and to pop them. And it, and it just set me off. Yeah. So... They didn't. They was doing normal little kid stuff, and then when they got to a teenager, now when they got to a teenager, Leah, it was Leah's attitude. Like it was her. I don't know. It was Leah would Leah would make you go there with her when she was a teenager. <laughs> like she didn't do stuff. Like I think I got blessed. I I really got blessed. Leah that. was more so like the one that. She crying, and you know how you say, shut up all that damn crying, and she would go louder. Yeah, that was Leah. Yeah, that was the type of stuff that she did. Uh, See, Gabby said she was, she she told me at one point that she was, she was scared of me. Because mm. I would do stuff like, I wouldn't put my hands on her, but I would get real quiet. Mm. And she was like the... The trying to figure out what you thinking in your head. Right. Like, what's she going to do next? Is right. she going to beat me? Is she going to next? She was like, that's worse than getting a whooping. Yeah. She was like, I hate it when you just get quiet. But, baby, y'all, one time we was in a store. Gabby had to be about, what was she, like, three, two, three? I forget. Yeah, she, she was, was little. About three, three. About three years old, we was in schnooks. And Gabby <laughs> went missing. Y'all, when I tell y'all her mama was about to lose her shit, Girl. we find Gabby. Gabby is with some white lady. Was she holding a white lady? Hannah was a white lady holding the, the her. The white lady was holding her. I'm sorry. <laughs> and best friend tried to get her, and she was like, no, she, she gonna, gonna beat me. me. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Gabby that. finna get you locked up. Oh baby, she was like she gonna be. She was crying for real. She like gonna be me. Like, he was you like, would have thought <laughs> that that lady was finna go call CPS in the back. Like she got on a red shirt. The child got on this. She got beads in her head. Man, man, that you would have thought like I was at home, like locking her in a dog man, cage best and I was feed her. Pissed. Best friend was pissed. The white lady didn't do nothing. She just handed her over and went on about her business. But yeah, that she was she was pissed. Girl, she was pissed. I was scared though, cause we literally went around that whole Yeah, store. we did. We split up and was looking for her. She I I didn't see her. By the time I saw, saw I never her, seen her. By the time I did see her, you had saw her too. Like we saw her at the same time with with a white lady. But yeah, apparently so another reason why I went to um to therapy was because of you know what I'm saying my parents and like I was yeah. like it's something something <coughs> the math ain't mathing I'm doing something wrong Kenya used to have me in my feelings so bad to the point for the rest of the week I was depressed really bad but when I first started seeing her she warned me she said it's gonna get worse before it gets better you're gonna have when you leave here you going to feel like shit, but it's going to get better. And she was right. She, she told me. She gave me one. And yeah, she, she was right. She was like, we got to break it, break you all the way down. Yeah. We have to get to yeah. the root of it all. And it was just talking to her like when I say she was just so, if you don't like raw and uncut, 
Yeah. You might not want to talk but see, to Bridget. Like, a, she didn't talk to you. Like, when you picture a therapist, you mm-hmm. you picture somebody sitting like this. How do you listening. feel? Well, how did, did that you make you today? feel? Yeah. 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 Uh-uh. That ain't Virginia. But see, here's the thing. Some of y'all go to these therapists and y'all want somebody to ask you how you feel and stuff. And that's not what you that, need. Yeah. You no. need that hardcore. Because I remember, okay, so when I started going to therapy was right when I got real popular on social media so that on top of the stuff that i was already dealing with it was it was a lot going on so i was very overwhelmed so i go to her and i'm telling her like yeah like i'm on social media all these people are following me out of nowhere i don't know who they are i don't know why they here i don't know why i'm so interesting to them and she was like what type of stuff are you posting so i'm like the, they want to. I'm going to the mall and I'm buying Louis Vuitton and Gucci and I'm driving a Range Rover and I'm showing all these things and I'm like, but you know, at this point, it's not who I am. You know, it's just what brings the views. So I gotta keep making this content because that's what they want to see. That's yeah. what you know. That's bringing the views. And she stopped me right in my tracks. She said, Uh, uh-uh, uh, uh, it is who you are. Embrace it. It's who you are. Stop fighting it. It's who you are. Yeah. People going to love it or they going to hate it. But it's who you are. She said, you know how I know it's who you are? Because how did you even start posting the content? You didn't know people was going to love the content when you first started posting it. True. <laughs> it's who you are. So when I came to realize that that is who I am, it is what it is. Y'all going to either love it or y'all going to hate it. However, I post differently now, but the same. Like, I post the same, but just a little different. Um, <coughs> you in this damn coffee. But she she held me accountable. And a lot of y'all go to therapists I'm who, get not, who not holding y'all accountable. You yeah. Know? Yeah, like Virginia's dick. Yeah, she, she'll hold your ass accountable. Baby, and the way that she talked to you is just... And baby, you walk in there, she got a whole sleeve. She had her hair shaved on both sides with baby. her look. She had some braids in the middle. She used to ask me, like, when we used to have our conversations, she'd be like, why are you in the bathroom taking your medicine? I used to go in the bathroom. That's where I would take my medicine at, in the bathroom. Like, I would sit in the bathroom. I would do the same. What What did she... Um, what did she... Like, where did she think you should have took your medicine at? She, it, I get where she was going with it because it's like, why you closing yourself off? Like, you embarrassed of what you do. Uh, why you go hide to do it? I got you. So, it was just like, she was like, why you don't do it in your living room? Or why you don't? And I'm just like, I don't want my whole house to smell like that. Yeah. She was like, okay, well, put it in your shisha. She was like, but... Mm-hmm. What is the reasoning behind you going in? And when she kept asking me, I'm like, girl, I don't know. I just like going to the bathroom <laughs> to do it. Like, I, it's I, comfortable. But I that. would have thought that you would go to the bathroom because of your kids, not wanting to expose your... That's what she meant. Like, why are you basically doing uh, something that you're embarrassed about? I got you. Baby, I got you. Nah. <laughs> you take your medicine anywhere. Anywhere. Yay. They, I don't care. Anywhere. Period. If you invite me to an event, you better know that I'm coming with my medication. Um, another topic. If y'all had to start over, what would you do in this day and age? If I had to do things over again, I would definitely do more for myself. Like I would put more focus on myself. I don't think y'all understand how much my kids and my husband, like my life revolve around them and it has from day one so now that the kids are getting older um i find myself not knowing what to do like i don't have no hobbies there's nothing i like like you know what i'm saying like i don't like to do anything i don't get my hair done i don't get my nails done i just don't do stuff for myself because i'm always worried about okay well what do they need what what does the kids need? Okay, what does the fun police need me to do? Like you you know what I'm saying? So if I had to do it over again, I would definitely prioritize myself a lot more than what I did. That way I wouldn't be sitting here looking stupid, not knowing what to do with my life. If I had to do it all over again. I would have got my nursing degree. Mm. 
I feel like the nursing field is you. Like it was yeah, made like, for you. I, I'm, it's like you know how when we was younger, they used to be like, "Time gonna pass you by. Mm-hmm, yep. You gonna look up and you gonna be yep. thirty some years." Old. And yep. it literally did yep. just that. We thought we had. We thought we had all, all day, man. Our whole life ahead yep. of us, and it's like. When I got accepted out of high school, that's exactly yes, what I should have did. did. And I didn't do that. Yeah. And I was just doing other stuff that didn't, didn't lead me yeah. down the path of, of nothing. Yeah. I'm, so with me being with somebody that was much older than me, it forced me to kind of like level up on things. So, and he gave me the opportunity to explore so much stuff like the fun police was he's like the most supportive person Mm -hmm. i didn't went to her school i didn't opened up a a beauty salon um what else have i done cleaning i had a cleaning company um i got my insurance license opened up a insurance agency i'm working on my real estate license um i was a stay-at-home mom i i did so much stuff but I never stuck with anything Mm -hmm. and that that might be the ADD in me, but I never stuck with anything. But if I had to give the younger generation any advice, my advice would be stay in your motherfucking lane. Stop looking at what the next person got and at what the Mm -hmm. next person is doing. Stay in your lane because guess what? At the end of the day, the person that's going to last the longest is the person that's going to win the race, not the person that gets from point A to point B the quickest. quickest. And when I say that, what I mean is me being in when I was in my 30s, I was looking at other people in my 30s, in their 30s that I felt was further, further than yes. me. And I was like, damn, I, why I can't go it, by it, it this? Yeah, it, why it, I can't it. do this? Why Why we not doing this? Why? And now I'm 40 and I'm looking at them same people that I passed up and I'm hmm. still going. And hmm. they still stuck where they was when we was in our 30s. Matter of fact, Mentally, some of them, some of them then, then went backwards yeah, mentally, financially. Mm-hmm. I remember looking at other people's houses when I was in my late twenties. I'm looking at other people's houses. I'm like, oh my God, they have such a nice house. Why we don't have a house like that? Now I live in a house two times as big what, as theirs. You know what I'm saying? And they still living in that same house that, that I was you know, drooling over mm-hmm. in my late twenties. So if I have any advice, it would be stay in your lane, focus on your on you and what it is that you're trying to get done. Just because your friends taking trips and buying designer bags and driving luxury cars it ain't your time, it ain't yeah. your time. wait it out it ain't your time yeah i did not buy my <coughs> first i didn't get my first designer handbag until i was in my 30s i got my first one except for like the dooney and burks and stuff we, no, we, we talk when i'm talking about designer i'm talking about the high-end designers yeah i didn't get my first one quality is what eight I think quality was maybe one. Yeah, so it's like it, everybody around me was 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 carrying a designer mm-hmm. bag, wearing designer shoes, I, and they was. I ain't even say what they was doing, but what they was doing, you can't. That shit don't fly no more these days. But yeah, trying to figure out why I'm not carrying certain bags and and stuff like that so yeah sometimes you not your turn not gonna be until you get a little older just wait it out just wait it out trust me trust me when i say wait it out it's gonna come it's gonna come my advice put yourself first Mm, yeah no matter what it may be even if you got kids Mm mm-hmm Job, mm-hmm. husband, put yourself yep. first. Because if you not together, how you expect them exactly. to be together? Yep. So, I wanted to bring up Risa Tisa because I know you went down the rabbit hole. I didn't go down uh-huh. the rabbit hole. Um, I couldn't watch that shit. I'm sorry. I went through like two or three videos, Yo, and I was like, attention span ain't. ain't I was like, long enough. her tone of voice. And the how slow she talk, I don't see how she blew up the way that she did. She's a great storyteller. Like when I was watching it, I would literally 
put my phone down. That's crazy. Or put my phone, like, you know, you got the little three charger thing. Sit it up on the stand. And I would be washing dishes or cleaning up, listening to It's like an audio book when you listen That's to crazy. her. It was straight like an audio book. I ain't never heard no audio book talk that damn slow. But <laughs> Rebecca said she sped it up. And she said that she that's how she got through it. She sped it up. I haven't tried to speed See, it up. I did. But I seen little clips like and I and of course I'm looking at videos of people talking about it and stuff. So I I kind of get like a understanding of what's going on. Um do you think that she's telling the truth or do you think this is all like some type of scam that you know that they put together to to come out with some type of movie or uh something like i don't know i can't. okay so to me like how she put it in the 50 point series you would think this was you know they trying to make something out of yeah. it how she put it together right but listening to her story she wanted that life so mm. bad she wanted that that man that was just in love with her. That was able to take yeah. care of her. And yeah, because it's like society put this thing in your head where big girls don't, you know yeah. what I'm saying? They don't find nobody to love yeah. them like that. Or it's all about the physical yeah. of the woman and yeah. not her heart. And it was just like he played with her heart because he knew that's what she wanted. I, and she seen them. Don't don't think she didn't see them red flags. Don't think she didn't notice she them. She ignored she them. She put them in the back of her head yeah. because in her head, she wanted this relationship with him. She wanted the husband. Yeah. She wanted the house. She wanted the, you know, the extravagant gifts. She yeah. wanted the extravagant trips. She wanted to, she was in her soft girl era. She wanted somebody to cater yeah. to her. And he seen that. He seen that as being mm. weak. I've learned when you're dating, don't say too much. Mm. Don't always talk about what you not, got. Not even always. Don't talk about your past relationships. Oh. Don't talk about what they took you through. Yeah. Don't talk about the bad times, the good. Don't talk about your past relationships. Right. Cause you got some partners out here that will listen to that. Mm -hmm. And then once they know what your heart desire, they, gonna play they on use it. that mm -hmm. against you. And that's what he did. She opened up to him. She told him, you know, how she wanted to have kids and right. how she he played with them. Cause he I didn't, I didn't go down her rabbit hole, but I went down his rabbit hole. Why did I go about down his rabbit hole? Who freaking knows? I didn't even want to go down his rabbit Who hole. Who freaking knows? I'm just weird like that. So I went down his rabbit hole, and he posted the the letter from Chase Bank. Uh, what else did he post? <coughs> he posted bank statements, like all the stuff that he posted. It was like. Ain't no but way why do in you have hell. That? Why do you still have that stuff? Because something is not right. The, why, why the, do you mall, have this stuff? the mall is open and no one's shopping. That's that's the only... She had to have known that that mall was open and there was no shoppers she in did. it. She had to have known. And so I saw somebody make a video that was like saying that she knew that he wasn't all the way there and that she was the one who was manipulating him. You, I wish I, I would have to go find the video so that you can see it because what they were saying, it made a lot of sense. I don't know if that was the, the case or not, but it made a lot of sense because it was like nobody in their right mind would have seen this guy and have a conversation with him and thought that anything that he was saying was the truth. Like ain't no way in hell. She's listening now. The whole VP and the the car and yeah. stuff like that. It's like okay, girl. And you living in the studio apartment, <coughs> but you approve for a seven hundred thousand dollar loan. But that's like okay. I dated this guy. Oh lord, y'all know I always got a story about. Oh that. lord. So I dated this guy, and he used to come off like he was that. Dude, mm. like he had money, like how he carry himself. Yeah. But if you was like a dummy, yeah, you'll be like, oh, oh, my man got money, right? right, my right, man. right. But if you sit and listen to his conversation, you in your grown woman status, you just like, now come on, why you lying? Who was that? You didn't say no name. <laughs> I ain't even gonna say that man name. Is but this recent? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
really recent or just recent? Just recent. But it was like when you start trying to have an intellectual conversation I, I with them, about. you just be like, <laughs> Carly, come finish this conversation for me. Like, that's yeah. how you be because you just... You be looking at them like you you can't believe what's coming out your mouth. I'm like, you okay with saying that yeah. out loud. And see, and that's how I, how I think of her. Like, it's either they both don't have shoppers in their mall, or she knew that he didn't have no shoppers and she I just think she ran through the mall like No, I just think she put it in the back of her head. Like she knew yeah. he wasn't right. She seen everything that everybody else is saying, she seen. Right. It was she knew it. It was there. It was like a part of her probably was like, what if uh, it this was is real? Of, no, up uh, her she I can change him. But I'ma be that one to change him. Right, but if you thinking this man is some VP of some company and she he knew got he wasn't a VP. And, and she knew that he didn't have no money, you think? She knew it. Got you, but she thinking why that. You, why 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 that man come live in your house in less than two weeks after COVID then he he didn't move completely in your house. She was lonely. She wanted a man. Yeah. She wanted that physical. Right. But I'm just lost with him pissing in the Gatorade bottles. I didn't know about that. He was peeing in the Gatorade bottles? Yeah, like he was having some knee pains or something. And he was living in the guest room. And he was using the bathrooms. Like she went in the room. She said, well, I was in his face. And I told him, girl, bye. No, you didn't. Why is it pissing in these bottles? I wouldn't care about your knee. Because he couldn't go to the bathroom? I guess it was a bathroom right there. But I don't know why he was peeing in the bottles. Yeah. Because they were saying, like, he kept saying he had an old football injury to his knee or something like that. But as soon as I would have walked in the room, that would have threw me completely off. I, I know damn well you ain't got no PC bottles. Oh, so it's not that the mall is open and nobody shopping. That mall is is closed yeah because permanently it, she said it was literally like she said he was drinking gatorades like crazy right and then pissing back into the bottles and pee in the bottles that's crazy the I, only way that i've known for like in a healthcare field people have urinals they're not peeing in bottles right and you just got them just a collection in the room ew that's nasty instead of getting up and going to the bed like Women, y'all got to do a better job. Y'all have to do a better job at stop being so daggone desperate, desperate. for a man. You, if you, I, I get it. And I'm talking, I'm talking because I've never been single. So I don't know how it feels to be lonely. But I can imagine that Even it's, if you it's hard. I can imagine it's hard, but y'all got to stop being so damn desperate. It's not desperate. worth the, the, yeah. the desperation because these men got in their head. I'm not even going to say these men. Some of these men got in their head like they are the prize. Like women are not the prize anymore. You know how they say you find a good woman. Yeah. You know, all that. No, these men, these, these men, some of these men, they want to be the 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 yeah. stay at home dad. They want you to go out and work. That's crazy. They want to be the ones at home cooking and cleaning. Because and women have made it okay. Yeah, and women and you like, have they don't women that's be taking providers. The women are the, the providers. Provi- and women are okay with walking into a situation and being a provider for and a I man. Think that comes from women with that 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 natural. Mama, you know what I'm saying? Like, I get it, but it's like sometimes you get in a relationship with somebody and you see the potential in them, yeah. You see the potential, yeah, and that's that that's a downfall right there. You need to be looking at what's directly in front front of of you, you, right? Instead of what could potentially be. But like with me, I'm naturally a helper, so if me and you talking or we dating or whatever the case may be, and you like, ah, man, I don't know how to open up a checking account. You know how to open up a chat. Oh, uh, yeah. Only thing you got to do is go online. Yeah, you know that's what I'm understandable. Different stuff like that. That part is understandable. But it goes further. You yeah. start doing more. And that's when a lot of a lot of black women, I can't say, we have been raised by dominant women. We have been raised to be independent. We have been raised to do things yeah. on our own. We, we've been taught, you don't need a man. No, no, I need a man. Right. I need a man. He needs to come on now. I'm ready for my bow ass. But anywho... <laughs> We 
We are so conditioned to be the dominant ones. Yeah. Now we want to be in that because I'm, I'm very dominant. You're very dominant. I'm very dominant. It's like, if I see you do a nigga, why, I mean, dude, why would you do some shit like that? Like, that's how I'm going to talk to you. Yeah. Like, if you do something stupid, why would you do that? Yeah. Like, that's how I'm going to, but that's like the mother in me talking to my child. Yeah, that's And it's crazy. like, some women take that. It's not they take it and run with it. That's just what they're used to. They're used to taking care of everything. Yeah. They're used to paying the bills. Right. They're used to, you know what I'm saying? They've been doing it so long. When a man comes in, sometimes we don't know how to let a man be a man. And you have to distinguish right. a when? man from a boy. But I, I think a I man told gonna you. Leave, a man is going to leave. A man going to pray with you. Y'all going to be able yeah. to sit down, have conversations in y'all relationship. Y'all can meet once a week. Sit down. All right, baby, this is what our finances right. looking like. Okay, so where is our relationship? You know what I'm saying? Where our relationship at? Right. I ain't like what you did on Tuesday at 234. I asked you, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. And instead of me coming back with, well, I did that because you. It's like. I ain't even realize I did that. My bad. Right. Yeah. But I ain't having since those we on the subject, you know what I'm saying. I'm calling this shit out right when it happened. But some people, you they is they just can't. Right. And it's just if you can't talk to your mate, just in general, just right. a conversation without them getting so defensive. Yeah. It's a problem. Yeah. It, I'm it's a, a problem. I'm a very defensive person. I'm very, I ain't going to tell a lie. I'm, a, I'm being I honest. I'm very, especially when it's something that you're telling me that I did or didn't do and I know it's the opposite. So if I, if I did something and you telling me that I didn't do it, so like, for instance, you know, me and the fun police, we had an issue at one point in time where girl I was just popping off. Like, I'd be talking to him crazy, and that's just because it was who I am. Like, mm -hmm. I've always been like that, and I was popping off on everybody. You know how I was when I was younger. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm popping off on everybody. So, it wasn't just him. He ain't like that, that shit. So, I got to the point where, like I said, I'm very self-aware. So, when we would have arguments or disagreements and stuff, I, I do stand back, and I try to analyze where I went wrong. And sometimes yeah. I feel like I apologize even when I wasn't necessarily the, the problem, but I will apologize for how yeah. I handle yeah. the situation. So if I know that it consciously I'm trying not to pop off like I always do because you complain that I pop off. So I'm trying not to pop off and we in an argument. And I know that I made a conscious decision not to pop off and you turn around and tell me that I'm popping off. I'm very defensive. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm I'm going off. I don't like that. Yeah, because I'm like, no, no, I did not. Because <laughs> it's like now I'm getting ready to pop, pop off. Because you're telling me I popped off and I didn't pop off because yeah. I know mentally I said we not popping off. That's like somebody said, you got an attitude. you like, no, nah, I don't yeah. have an attitude. And they like, yes, you do. What's wrong with you? And it's like, I don't. But now I got, I got an attitude. attitude. Right, right. Like, so, I got an attitude now. Yeah, so I get defensive with with stuff like that but like men are especially when you're dealing with older men so fun please is 48 so technically he is a little older he ain't old but he's a little older mm -hmm. so he's stuck in his ways and the fun police is not really tech savvy so he don't do the computer stuff he barely do the phone stuff and he be making me mad because he be wanting like the phones that i get and stuff and it's like all you using this damn phone to do is call. He don't text. He don't like texting. He don't like none of that. So when he tries to do stuff on the internet, he can't figure it out. I'm like, Moog, here. I, I just yeah. do it. You know, so I understand, like, the being the person to, like, take care of stuff or having to handle stuff. <coughs> but when it comes to taking care of everything financially as a woman, no. I'm, I'm going to have to say no to that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, women can see a man who, who's not financially stable, and yeah. they will they will make the conscious decision to date that man, knowing that man can't him. give you what you're really looking for, right. or what you want your life to be. It's like you you can't date down. You can't date off of potential. Yeah. That's why I said you can't yeah, date Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to go by, because I've made that mistake so many times, dealing with people that I know daggone well. Yeah. You not my cup of tea. Yeah. And it's like now I'm in a stage where I noticed it. Right. 
And it's like once you get yeah. to talking a certain way, and I start thinking, I, I, and I get to talking to you like you sound stupid. Mm-hmm. Like, did, did you know that was dumb? Mm-hmm. Why would you say something like it's time for me to go ahead and let you go? Because now I'm gonna start talking to you. Yeah, real disrespectful. Is I don't have no respect for you no more. Gotcha. So I'm gonna start talking down to you. Then it's gonna be like I'm gonna start looking at how you handle your money. How you do? You go to work. Is you lying about being at yeah. work? Do you got? Do you really got this? I'm gonna start analyzing some stuff. That's why I said she knew. Yeah, because she started to talk down to him. Mm. See, I didn't. I didn't know nothing about that part. Yeah, either. and like when she's talking about it, she got to a point where. She knew. She said it. I knew he was lying. I knew he was lying. And I've been in that position where somebody's been talking and I know you're lying. Yeah. And it's like, and I'm, I will sit there and I will listen to you. Same. I, I will just listen to yeah. you. I, will, I won't tell you. Now I know you lying. Mm-mm, I'll just listen. But when it come that one time where you strike a nerve. And we finna go down this rabbit you hole. Finna, you finna bring up we every lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm finna bring it up. Because I'm finna hit below the belt. I'm finna make you hurt. I'm finna make you feel less of a man when I get I done. am the worst. When when I'm really pushing that point, I am the worst. I am pulling out everything. I hit. I go to hell. I used to. I go to hell. I used to be ready. You hit low, we going straight to hell. You we ain't going, even got to hit low. We going beneath hell. Now, the best thing I do, and it, it eats people up. Yeah. I don't say nothing. Fun police do that shit to me, though. When I'm when I'm hot and heavy and I'm going in, he gets to the point where he just start ignoring just, me. Oh, baby, they, them fighting words. I be wanting to mm-mm. pop him upside his head or I don't give, I don't, and, and people hate when you don't acknowledge them. Yeah. They try to say I am that. people. They try to say that. I, I hate when people do it to me. Be being quiet, me not talking to you. Mm-hmm. No, I, because I know you want to talk to me. Right. Because I'm, I'm, I'm me. I'm me. You love me. My, en- my energy is everything. Period. Like, uh, you meet me, you going to love me, honey. I, I, that, that's just what it is. And people do stuff, and once you take that, once you take yourself away from yeah. them, and they don't have that access to that laugh, yeah. that food, them conversations, yeah. they get to missing you. And the fact that you're not even, they don't even live in your brain, it kills them more because they like, I want to talk to her. Mm-hmm. I want to know what she doing. Yeah, I want. You know what I'm saying? They, they I just got you. want to. But, I got mm-hmm. you. We got to close this daggone video out. Come we on, will girl. be back for another freaking podcast as soon as we can, especially if I can figure out how how to do it virtually. I think the virtual thing would be great. That would be a, a great way. But mm-hmm. make sure y'all check back for another podcast. Um, check. The last Sunday, I mean, Monday, the last Monday, um, I posted a new weekly vlog. And then make sure you go check out the last track vlog from Lexi running at the New Balance Nationals. And go check out that last podcast that I did with Dom Galore. Y'all better go watch that or listen. One or the other. Y'all better do something. Just so, tune in. Just tune, tune in. in. So we are ending this conversation right here. And you guys know, as always, Until next time.